There were three Christians who were sentenced to die by the guillotine. One Christian had the gift of faith. The other Christian had a gift of prophecy. And the other, a gift of helps. The Christian with the gift of faith was to be executed first. He was asked if he wanted to wear a hood over his head. He declined. And said he was not afraid to die. I have faith that God will deliver me. He shouted bravely, positioned his head under the guillotine. And as his head was chopped on a sharp blade, the short prayer waited confidently. The rope had pulled and nothing happened. And then the executioners were amazed, believing that he must have been an act of God, they freed the man. The next man had the gift of prophecy. And he laid his head positioned between the guillotine blade, and he too said he didn't want a hood over his face. No, I am not afraid to die. However, I predict that God will deliver me from this guillotine. At that, the rope was pulled again, Nothing happened. Once again puzzled, the executioners were amazed and said, this must be a miracle of God. And they freed the man. Third, the third Christian with the gift of help was next. He was brought to the guillotine and likewise, he wanted to wear, didn't want to wear a hood. No, I am just as brave as the other two. The executioners then positioned his face underneath the guillotine, and they were about to pull the rope when the man stopped them. He said, hey, wait a minute, he said. I think I found the problem with this guillotine. <laughs> Spiritual gifts and the school of gifts, the school for the gifted. Today we'll continue what we left off last week in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in the gifts of the Spirit. The Bible tells us that each and every Christian has a spiritual gift. In fact, there are some with multiple gifts, but we all have at least one. These gifts are from God and are both good and perfect but operated by imperfect people. Rather practical or supernatural, these gifts of God to us, for others, and not ourselves. These gifts are to drive us towards unity, community, and cooperation. Not cooperation in the aspect of, oh, you, you get in line, but cooperation as in co-op as in working together. We all possess an ingredient for a special dish, and we all have to bring our ingredient to the kitchen. Your ingredient isn't merely the silverware to participate in the feast, but you have a participation in the process. There are 19 spiritual gifts listed in the Bible, those 19, the apostle gift, the gift of apostolic, to be sent, the goers, the go-getters, the gift of prophecy, the gift of evangelism, the gift of shepherding, the gift of teaching, the gift of exhortation, the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, the gift of helps, the gift of hospitality, the gift of giving, the gift of government, the gift of showing mercy, the gift of faith, the gift of discernment, the gift of miracles, the gift of healing, the gift of tongues and interpretations. And the Bible doesn't say these are the only gifts. It actually hints that there are other gifts also. 
These lists change in order depending on where you're looking. If you're looking in Romans 12, whether you're looking in 1 Corinthians 12, where we are, or Ephesians 4, or 1 Peter 4. The emphasis is never on the gifts, but on God. Amen. 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 These are gifts of God. When we think of two of the greater characters in the scriptures, both Samson and or Solomon, who knows who Samson is? What was Samson's gift? Strength. And Samson's strength was not his strength, but God's. Amen. We all know who Solomon is. And what was Solomon's gift? Wisdom. And it was not Solomon's wisdom, but God's. Ephesians 4 and 12 tells us that the gifts are for the perfecting of the saints. You, you probably won't get this now. The three reasons for spiritual gifts. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. And for the edifying, edification of the body of Christ. That's Ephesians 4 and 12. The church needs you. Amen. I know we like to sit and say... I, I don't need the church. I, I don't know if I can stand the church. Maybe by experience, church hurt. Maybe some people looked at me funny when I came into the church and when I was experiencing some things. They were back talking or back biting or even back stabbing and back sliding. But the, the church isn't <laughs> just for you, but you are for the church. Amen. Amen. <sighs> it, it, it wasn't uh, Kennedy who said ask not what you can, the country can do for you but what you can do for the country and we should have that same sentiment when it comes to the church of God so often we want to worry about what does this church have to offer me amen amen, oh. amen. amen. overlooking what you have to offer the church Sometimes there are deficiencies in the church and in the body structure so that you can come there and fill that role. Amen. 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 Oh. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it ain't perfect because it needs you in order to work towards the perfecting of the saints. And we continue in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12 and 12, where Paul writes, just as the body is one and yet has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, by the spirit of God, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Christ, by whichever name you call it, that is the spirit that calls you. It is the spirit that convicts the sinner's heart and conscience. It is the spirit that draws us closer to Christ. And ultimately, it is the spirit that changes us, transforming us by the renewing of our minds. The spirit makes us Christ-like. And the gifts of the spirit serves in that purpose, to draw us closer towards Christ's likeness and not to drive us or drive divisions between individuals. We are all baptized into one body. The members of the church, both local and or the global universal collective, submerge or converge into one while maintaining our own individuality and identity. The hand serves a function, and it is not the same as the foot, but both serve the body. The Bible tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is no one quite like you. No one. And while the world wants uniformity and tells us how we all should look, or how we all should act, or how we all should talk, 
or how we all should walk. I, I remember wanting some, some big tins and, and, and the long shirt because that's how everybody else was dressing. And that's what the society and the community was telling me I had to dress like in order to feel like I was a part of the big collective. But God is calling you to still be you even in part of the whole. Be you, the best version of you, and come together with others to be greater than you could be alone. Amen. 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 One can chase a thousand, the Bible said, but two can chase ten thousand. I'm sure many of you have heard of Voltron. Anybody heard of Voltron? Maybe I'm the only person who heard of Voltron. Maybe y'all younger, more of my age group. Maybe it was Power Rangers. It was kind of based off of Voltron. The idea of Voltron was an animated TV series from the 80s that had five space pilots, fighter pilots, who fought off different threats and then would join their forces to fight the greater threat. All of them would join their machines together to form the giant robot, Voltron. It's time for Voltron, they would say. Get ready to assemble, activate, interlock. Dino turns connected, Voltron. And it's time for the church to form its Voltron, to stop being so divided and to come together, to interlock towards our bigger goal. And the Bible says rather Jew or Greek, rather slave or free, all were made to drink from one spirit. One spirit. One spirit. But the spirit teaches us that you still matter. Though we all drink from the same faucet is the idea. Uh, we we you still matter. You are still sacred. Your identity, your ethnicity, and your specific gifts, or gifts, whether singular or plural, they matter. But they don't just matter to you. They don't make you better. They make us better. And they don't make you any less either. So they don't make you better because what you don't have or what you do have, and it doesn't make you any less because of what you have or what you don't have. I know the world asks, if everyone's special, then what's so special about being special? That's a pessimistic way that the world has us look at our gifts and talents and our individuality. It, but, but the word teaches us that each of us is special and has something special to add in order to add value to the whole collective. That's what's special about you being special, is that you have something to add. You have an ingredient to bring to the party. Amen. 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 I, I didn't ask her permission, but I'm going to use her in my sermon. My wife, <laughs> she used to question about her gift. It's like she couldn't see it. Or if she did, uh, she didn't quite see it as a gift, but maybe more as a burden. While I knew early what my gift was, she wrestled with her. Maybe she desired something greater in her mind that wouldn't get as much attention. You know, she don't want all the attention. Uh, and, and, and I've seen it immediately. Sometimes others can see your gifts before you can. Amen. Clearer than you can. True. So if you are someone who may be struggling or wrestling with trying to understand, what is my gift? Maybe you should ask some people. Just ask someone, what do you see in me? What are some qualities? What are, what are some of my gifts and talents? Maybe, maybe they can pull it out of you or, or, or add clarification to what your gift may be. I've seen it immediately. Sometimes others can see it before you can. 
They can see our strengths before us. I would tell her she would overanalyze things. My dad is looking like, that's all women. <laughs> I would tell her she overanalyzed uh, some things. and But rather that's, what do you want to eat? Don't ever ask a woman what she's going to eat. Amen. So she'll struggle with what, what to eat, what to wear, or where to take the next vacation. She gets to overthinking, but she see every detail, considering every possible outcome, even if she doesn't always make the decision, even when I'm pushing her to make a decision. It allows me to hear every side of the equation from her and to calculate and go. She stops me from going without thinking, and I'll stop her from thinking without going. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, working together. I am weak in areas where she is strong, and vice versa. Likewise, as individuals of the church, there are some areas where you are weak. There are some areas where you fall short. And that's where you lean on your brothers. That's where you lean on your sisters. That's where we become a crutch for each other. This is why no man was made to be an idol. No man was meant to go towards his, through his Christian journey alone. You God has placed brothers and sisters of the faith in your past, in your path, in your life to help you. Don't be so proud to ask. Amen. Some of us, we do get too proud to ask. For the body is not one part, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not part of the body. For this reason, it is not any less part of the body. I know sometimes Paul's using the analogy of the human body and the human physical structure. But we do get like that. We get to a place and be like, well, if I can't be the elder, then I ain't going to be here at this church. Amen. If I can't be the usher, if I can't lead worship, if I can't be the pastor, then I'm going to start for <laughs> Presbyterian Church across the street. Because you are not the hand. Does not mean you are any less significant. Amen. Amen. What we say the hierarchy of the gifts are, there is no hierarchy. All the gifts are from God. And we are all serving the same God. At least I hope so. Amen. It says, in the ear cannot say, because I am not an eye, I am not part of the body. For this reason, it is not for this reason any less part of the body. We all have a function. We all have a role. We all have a part to play. Uh, and it is your job not to analyze and criticize someone else's gift or the role they're playing, but to figure out what your role is and to play that role. Marvin Lewis used to say, do your job. In the book of Ezra, Ezra had to tell the people as they were building the walls of the city to stop focusing on what your neighbor is doing and not doing, but you build the part of the wall that is in front of your house. Amen. You do your part. Amen. You do your part. Now, if the body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has arranged the parts, each one of them in the body, just as he desired. Not as you desire, but as God has desired. God has placed functions and gifts in all of us. Sometimes some people have multiple gifts because God needs you to do multiple things to pick up burdens where others may lack. But when you see someone carrying a burden that you can carry, and you sit idly by. I know Brother Reggie back there, he do about 
10 different things. We're about 10 different hats. And some of us, we need to put on a hat. Amen or ouch. It's all right. It's all right. But now God has arranged the parts of the body as he desired. Now are many parts, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you. And again, the feet can say, I have no need to you. To the head, I have no need for you. We all have a need for each other. And you, you, you don't see it. And maybe as clear as you should see it. Sometimes we be in close relationships with people we know we need. Or can't go without, at least on the short term. But we get so full of pride. We say what we say. I don't need you. <laughs> Amen. Imagine somebody saying that they don't need you. You leaving. <laughs> How long would it take for them to call you back? We all, we need God, but we all need each other. We can't go at it alone. And on the contrary, it is much truer, Paul says, that the parts of the body for which seem weaker, which seem less honorable or less presentable, uh, for these God has bestowed a great honor. Sometimes you feel like, why well, as a pastor, all I do is uh, hold the door in the, uh, before service, or I, I'm the greeter, or I, I play parking lot attendant, or I serve the meals. I, I, Paul is saying that you are not any less important than anyone else. Amen. Your role is still vital towards the whole operation. Oh, you still have a part to play. Your role is still important. And, and, and God says <laughs> uh, specifically that it's the weaker things that he uses to shame the strong. The, the foolish things that shame the wise. God will use your ministry sometimes more than he'll use the ministry of the spoken word from the pastor here in the pulpit. Someone's life and energy and, 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 and whole demeanor can change because you smiled at them as an usher letting them in the door before any words have been spoken. Amen. Or after a thousand words have been spoken. You can have much more influence on the soul turn, turning and changing and, and being convicted and turning towards Christ and from whatever they left at home. You are not any less valuable. You still have seeds to plant. You still have a role to play. You still have to participate. That's what the Bible says. Now we are Christ's body. Individually parts, so still maintaining our individuality. One person or all people ain't doing the same thing. If we all doing the same thing, we doing something wrong. We all have a role to play. We all have strengths and weaknesses. And throughout our strengths and weaknesses, we should balance each other out. Amen. Rising the whole time. Amen. 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 And amen. For God has appointed it this way in the church. He, he says, God, God had it appointed this way. He, he didn't make you good at everything. You may be good at math, but maybe you struggle with, well, what I struggle with? I don't know. I'm, I'm more of a math person. Maybe you're good at art, arts and crafts. Maybe you're good at reading and uh, language. Maybe you have strengths in some areas, but not in others. And, and, and God is putting you in position to use your gifts and to help the whole of some. When we surround ourselves with people who are just like us, we rarely elevate further than where we are. Amen. Mm. Somebody needs to hear that. When you surround yourself with people who are just like you, you will not elevate from where you are. Amen. Surround yourself with people who are different, who think differently, who have different backgrounds, influence, pools, connections. And they can use their pool, influence, connections, knowledge of areas you're not knowledgeable of to help you and assist you to grow. Amen. Whether that gets you a job or job interview or introduce you to somebody better than the people you keep running into in your circle. 
Amen or out. God has appointed us in the church, he said. They're numbered here, but there is no hierarchy. The numbers change depending on the text you read. So Paul lays out this order in this time. He says, apostles, then prophets, then teachers, then miracles, gifts of healing, helps, administrations, and various kinds of tongues. So he listed a few, not all, of the 19 that are listed. Now I said the Bible uh, does not say that the 19 that are listed in Scripture are the only spiritual gifts. There are gifts that are in operation and in use and may be more in use today than maybe they were 2,000 years ago, but have uh, more influence today and can be used to edify and build the body. So whatever gifts and talents that you have, maybe it's praise dancing. Maybe it's singing in the choir. Maybe it's leading a Bible study. Maybe it's checking on people, calling them, uh, praying for them, making sure they're all right. Because we all have a purpose to play. Uh, and, 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 and Paul emphasizes, he says, everybody's not an apostle, are they? Everybody's not a prophet. Everybody's not a teacher. Everybody doesn't work miracles. Everybody doesn't have the gift of healing. Everybody doesn't speak in tongues. I know we have brothers and sisters in the faith that are zealous, and we cannot fall on any side of the extreme. I know that sometimes in our Reformed theology as Presbyterians, we can get to the point where we say, yo, the gifts were in operation at that time, and God used the gifts to upstart and jumpstart the church, but we don't know if all the gifts are in operation. Let us not be so naive. And let us not be so extreme in the other direction where we say that uh, if you don't speak in tongues or perform these type of miracles, then you are not saved. Both cause division. The, the object of this text is not to cause division, but to bring unity and different even viewpoints. That we can bring our viewpoints together to work toward a common goal for the common good. So even if I think differently than you on this aspect and you have different thoughts on this aspect, we can come together and see what is better for the whole. Amen. What is the common good? There is a role. We can't fall to any extreme. Because the Bible does not say, I know we reformed, that these gifts were done. And we can see them operate, and we shouldn't be so blind not to. But we can't say that these are the end all, be all. For we have to remember the purpose of the gifts are to perfect the saints and to build the body of Christ. How you do it is not as important as that you do it. Paul says, lastly, to desire the greater gifts. Desire the greater gifts. He listed some gifts that these people were clamoring towards, like he said, the showy gifts, the gifts that people wanted that would put them out front rather than being uh, a servant of food at the table or an usher at the back door. People wanted to be the prophet prophesying and speaking for God in front of the whole congregation. Paul says there are even greater gifts than that, and I want you to desire those gifts. And next week, we will go over those gifts. But as for now, I thank you. And hope that you learned something in the school for 